Hi, let me show you my setup. Whenever I do some work at my desk for these projects, I've got to set my light source there, I place my camera, and it sucks. I myself have to sit off to the side, I need to reach into the frame. It frankly, kills most of the fun, but I'm happy to say that's no longer the case. I made myself this gorgeous desk lamp. So let's get on to the video and let me show you how I made it happen. Okay, so I've got myself a piece of wood which I need to cut down into sections. And I'm cutting at 45 degrees in alternating directions. It will allow me to offset the pieces before assembling. And once I glue them all together, I will be able to cut a nice prominent curve. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a couple of moments. But before then, let me give you a glimpse of what the stand is gonna look like. So this is what I've got in my head. A thick, long frame overarching my desk. And it measures 130 centimeters in height. Quite colossal for a desk lamp, wouldn't you say? Now, for aesthetic reasons I intend to run a cable through the core and not around. This is another reason why I had to have small sections of wood. I can now drill a hole straight through with a bit of standard length. With all the holes in place, I can proceed to gluing. I'm using a thin dowel for alignment, and I'm stapling the pieces together, only because there's no way I can clamp them otherwise, waiting for the glue to set. And I'm gonna remove all the staples afterwards, of course. For now I'm gonna keep a lamp stand in three straight sections, because it's gonna be a whole lot easier to push a cable through when the time comes. But before then, I need to shape the stand. And I'm starting by giving it that curve I mentioned earlier. And my jigsaw is just perfect for that task. It's starting to look really nice, but let's carry on. I've set my jigsaw to cut at 45 degrees angle, and I'm giving it another pass. The more material I can take off of the saw, the less effort I will be required sanding. Nevertheless, there's plenty of sanding. And in terms of grit, I'm going from 60 all the way to 800 to achieve a really smooth finish. With that out of the way, I can get some work done in terms of electrics. I'm first running a mains cable through the lower two sections, and I chose this type of wire because I'm gonna power my light from the mains voltage. Having said that, I've already got a lot thinner wire in my top section, but it's fine, because I intend to power low current LED strips. If it wasn't the case, I would run a risk of burning that wire. Now to join the two, I stripped the ends and soldered the wires together. I've prevented any potential shorts by having the joints far apart. With the wire sorted, I need to get back to the wood, and I'll be using these two planks to make the base for my stand. I'm cutting them both in a certain way, to allow them to slot to each other at 90 degree angle, like so. I've proceeded to glue the joint. I then cut in a familiar curve on the inside of the base, and sand it all down until smooth. I'll be using large screws to connect the base to the lamp stand, so I need to make four corresponding holes and properly countersink them. As you can see, I've also finished the lamp stand, and it looks gorgeous. I'll now be applying some wood stain to give the wood some color. And as usually, I go for a dark oak look. It's just I always like the way it turns out. Finally, I'm brushing on some teak oil to finish the wood. Alright, on to the next part, the lampshade. And I want mine to be in the shape of a frustum. It's a word to describe a cone with a top cut off. I found this handy visualization tool online, to which I left a link in my video description. It gives you the required dimensions of the flat material you want to fold in the shape of a frustrum. In my case, it's sheet aluminum. All you have to do is define top and bottom radii and the height of the frustrum, and you're in business. Mine should look like this, by the way. Even though the aluminum sheet I had was just big enough for me to cut the entire shape out, I decided to divide it into smaller pieces in order to save the material. A decision which cost me hours and hours of work trying to join them back together. Yeah, never mind. Anyway, 
metal cutting metal is not the most pleasant sound, so I'm putting earplugs in before I'm letting my jigsaw cut the pieces out, which it does with no problem at all. Looking good? On to the hard part, trying to join everything together. I'll be heating the plates up and join them with aluminum solder. If you've seen one of my previous videos, I've tried to use this technique and I failed miserably. So let's call it a round two. I need to admit, my initial setup is not great. The pieces are wobbling in the air and liquid solder is accumulating on the other side. But with little practice and a few iterations, I've been moving forward. By the end, I had the aluminum clamp tightly in place and my lines became much cleaner. Just never mind the burning wood from underneath. I tried to use metal at first, but it would absorb too much heat and I couldn't reach high enough temperatures for the brazing rods to melt. The next step is filing the excess solder off, but this material is hard. My file was barely doing anything apart from scratching the surrounding aluminum. So I tried my rotary tool instead, which worked slightly better, but still very time consuming. Eventually I used some sandpaper and some WD-40 to make the seam even less visible. I started with 200 grit followed by 400 grit. The plan was to make the lampshade seamless, but after the joint broke a couple of times, I had to settle and leave the seams in. You see, my parts are so thin, the joining them on that edge alone would not produce a strong enough joint. I had to let the solder flow slightly around, as shown in a picture in red. With that said, the seams give off a nice handmade feel, which I don't mind at all. So I'm at the stage where I need to bend the shape into a frustrum. And who needs fancy bending tools? I've got a rolling pin. And I'm awfully careful. I wouldn't like to break another joint. Not this late into the process. And what do you think? I'm just one joint away from having my lampshade. And lo and behold, it's in one piece. It's actually an excellent attempt to hit that thumbs up button for the effort. I'm just saying. Next, let's remove all the scratches. And I'll start by sanding the 400 grit sandpaper. This time I'm using soapy water to wet the surface as opposed to WD-40. It doesn't really matter. Soapy water is just cheaper. After that, I repeat with 800 grit sandpaper. And I work my way up all the way to 3000 until I'm happy with the result. One last thing before we move on. I want to polish the surface. And for this, I'm using some aluminum polish. I beef the surface for a little bit and use a dry paper towel to reveal the shine. After I polish both sides, I'm ready to put the lights in. And I'll be using 6 meters worth of LED strips for that. And as you might have guessed, I'll be using double tape to glue the LED strips onto the lampshade. Now, the LEDs I bought came in a waterproof rubber, which I need to peel off first. In case you were wondering why didn't I just buy regular LED strips, it's because based on my research, this should be the brightest per unit length affordable LED strips. 6 meters of them should circle the lampshade 3 full times, and that should be bright enough for my needs, I would hope. Due to the way the LEDs are arranged, I've got 6 individual strips of 1 meter, which I need to connect in parallel. And if you do something like this yourself, make sure to get the polarity right. Next, let's connect up the dimmer, which came along with LED strips. So I need to cut the ends of both, the dimmer and the cable running for the lamp stand. I'm then exposing some copper before I can solder the wires together. The light's gonna be powered from the mains voltage, so I need to be absolutely sure that I don't have any shorts. For this reason, I wrap both individual wires and the entire cable in electrical tape. Good. Now I'm harvesting a rivet head, which will perfectly hide the hole in the lamp stand where the thin wire comes out. Just watch. As I said, perfectly. I chose this natural looking rope to match the theme of the lamp. And after I tie this to this loop, I'll be hanging the lampshade off of it. 
but before then I need to solder the supply wires to the LEDs. Remember, it's important to get the polarity right, otherwise LEDs won't light up. Again, we're dealing with the mains voltage, which can be lethal, so you must insulate all the electrical connections. In this case, I'm using some heat shrink, whereas hot glue does the trick in other places. And to finish it off, I'm connecting the base to the stand. At first, I was prepared to make some sort of a diffuser, but even though collectively LEDs are very bright, they give off a soft light, which doesn't irritate my eyes at all, even if I stare at them directly. Now for the main feature I was after. Since the light comes from different directions, as soon as I lift my hand up, the shadow just disappears. And that's exactly what I wanted. Now I'll be able to work on a small scale, always in good lighting conditions. But there's more. There's a dimmer switch, so say I'm working here late or watching something online, I can bring this all the way down. But this is the best part. My camera slider fits right under. It doesn't cast a shadow and it gives the viewer the best angle. Hello! Pretty clever, don't you think? If you do, like, subscribe, watch a slider video if you haven't seen it, and I'll see you next time.